Justin got freaking clocked right in the head. Check out my first tech with a real welder. It, it, it's not bad. And what's going on YouTube? EXO coming at you here feeling great. Christmas is upon us. The holiday spirit is in the air. Yet another day to be thankful for. Thanks for choosing to spend time with a goof like me doing audio. It really does mean a lot. So from the bottom of my heart, happy holidays to you and your family. If you recall from last week, the new color options for subwoofer baskets got narrowed down to four choices. I really like all four, but one color in particular jumped out enough to test it in real life. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out. The second I started spraying, I knew I had to stop. Son of a Yeah, I know, I know. I went a little wide for just a test. Good thing it was only on the insides though, because this is super easy to undo, but that blue color, meh, something about it, no proper words. It's just not the look that I'm shooting for. So we'll press backspace on the blues and settle for a timeless classic with gloss white. I've always been a huge fan of classy looking white finishes. They really help brighten up the box. Plus they play super nicely with LEDs. You can just about make your subs look any color with decent LEDs and white paint. Stay tuned for a full length video covering that. But until then, let's get busy with part three of the big car audio bit. Here we are, day three of the big build. This should be the day where we really start seeing things coming together, at least with the outside shell, the cage being wedged in there, all visible. It should be a real go-getter type of day. Quick pit stop for some extra protection. You all remember happened last time. Ooh, definitely don't want to be making that mistake twice, or I should say three times. <laughs> It's kind of cool too, because I used to get this same exact feeling right before getting to the skate park when I was a kid. I'd be all excited thinking of all the tricks I would do, and apparently I feel the same exact way about car audio now and big build sessions like this. Whoosh. On the inside, everything's still bare as can be. The walls aren't deadened, the wires aren't plumbed. It's basically just as we started. But there's a method to the madness because the steel cage will end up completely changing both those areas. Our roof will be so tight that all the wires need to be either rerouted or removed, and our side walls are so close that good old expanding foam could seriously do the job here fill the voids and stop the rattles. We'll essentially use the steel cage itself to bridge the gap between every single vibrating surface, completely braced, floors, walls, sides. So when done correctly, it just removes flex completely and deadens sound, of course, but obviously without adding hundreds of pounds of deadener or having an empty space for flex to feast on. Can never go wrong with a good old 16 point turn to get her in. All right, feeling fresh in the garage and you can see the side panel pretty much all complete right here. Just a couple more wells that need to be finished across and that will complete both sides. So today is the day where we're gonna pretty much erect, <laughs> erect both of these sides. And like we were mentioning before, we're gonna be able to weigh all of this stuff in the end. Obviously it's gonna weigh a lot, but you know, doing that one extra rung added more weight. So it'll be cool to see what it is in the end. All right, so here's the plan. We are going to be putting some flat bar down just enough till we reach the door. That way we have something to screw our squares to when we start filling up all these gaps. Obviously they need to be filled. That will be the wood that we do later on. You can just imagine that material taking up that space right here so we actually have something physical for the screws to go in. There is 
is all we'll need to have the backing so the wood shall go on easy breezy, lemon squeezy. Looks damn nice, dude. Wow, Instagram's finest. These goggles to use with all three of his grinders in the shop, taking this down a little bit on the opposite side. So we're gonna take those, there's just a couple high rises here and there from all that welding, so to smooth her down, we're gonna take some power tools and go ham. Unlike the other section, which obviously has the door opening, so it gives us a little bit of wiggle room for space, this has no wiggle room for space. In fact, there's very little space, so we have to do these lats on every single one. You guys ordinarily are dealing with the SAG 101, but now we're gonna have the 252. We've seen the whole thing sit around the wheel. <laughs> I keep not, man. I went overkill with that Adelie, if you think, huh? Yeah, probably. Well, better have it just in case. Yeah, you got plenty of these things. All right, the next step, which is probably already laced in the comments from people being like, why is there rust? Why is there rust? Come on, we live in North Carolina. There's humidity central down here, so this is just some surface rust. So now we're gonna take her down a little bit and do our part with some black spray paint. It'll look the part and it will help protect it for what it's worth. But realistically, this is no, this rust is really serving no problem. You don't mind if a little paint gets on your sawhorses, right? Okay. did for the last one, but we're gonna do it outside this time, save ourselves the extra triple lifting, and start grinding. It's time to tackle the floor. Just like the side sections, it's a fine balancing act of choosing the right gap sizes. Smaller gaps means more weight, but the floor really needs it. The floor needs to be real strong. It's gonna hold the baffle. You can bolt the baffle and the floor together, and then it moves. And it Everything will move. What? That much culinary and water force. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been doing all the prep work for all the small pieces you see here off to the side. Me and that little grinder are getting well acquainted. I appreciate them letting me able to use the power tools. I know that's always kind of a give or take situation. Eight inch squares for the bottom. So that's gonna be very strong and I couldn't be any happier. I'm so excited. Everything's coming together real good. You can see we're just going right along, taking these pieces so everything is nice and square, taking it up when it's nice and welded and then going along just like we did for all the other pieces. It's very repetitive, this whole process. You just gotta keep doing the same old, same old. And I will say, I, I, I would like to maybe 
ask him if I can lay down a, a bead, but I'm not very good with the Harbor Freight one I've been trying to practice with at home. Thanks for watching the process here over at the 252 Garage. Make sure to slap a big fat thumbs up for your man EXO and all our friends here making this possible. I am so absolutely thrilled. I was just taking a quick look at the panels now that they're outside drying. Everything's looking real good, man. And oh, I just realized I'm wearing two pairs of goggles. Better be safe than sorry, right? I'll wear that just for a backup. <laughs> look at them. They're, they're, they're beautiful. And they're all, they're all coated. And I bet so many people were going to complain that there was a little bit of surface rust. But don't worry. We shut them right up, didn't we? And speaking of shutting right up, boom. Whew. There has been a few comments that I'd like to address real quick. So if you followed the channel for any period of time, you've probably noticed that I'm always by myself. I build by myself, I film by myself. It's generally a pretty lonely process. Wall builds, box builds, building subs, building batteries, RCs, computers, bus bars, tower speakers, you name it. I pretty much do everything from scratch. And along that journey, I've had so many people try to encourage me to reach out for help, even if just to have more friends around or to have an extra pair of hands around the shop. After all, I am just a small fella. Dealing with 200 pound panels and 100 pound subs can get old quick. So with all that in mind, I was extremely surprised to hear people talking crap the very first time I choose to work with my neighbor 252. For some reason, there's a few people saying, oh, he's not building all by himself. He's got friends helping him weld, boo. And to that, I simply say, what? No freaking way. I'm not having the wind taken from my sails that easily. The sacrifices, the time. This has been my entire life the past three years. So to see even one person say that I'm not working or it's not my build, oh my word, that's absurd. I wish you guys could be there in the garage to see I'm busting. We're all busting. I just happen to be the only one behind the camera shooting the action. So it looks however it looks. So as far as not working goes, that's something I'm not even gonna entertain. There's so much that happens behind the scenes. Say if something doesn't look right, I personally problem solve with the team until it's just right. You see, there's constantly that type of progression going on behind the camera. Every step that gets narrated by me has already been carefully thought out beforehand. So this is exactly the build that I want. I'm right there alongside building it and I'm not afraid to say it. I'm proud to be with my friends learning how to weld for the first time. He even let me pick up his $2,000 Lincoln for my first tack. Do it again. Okay, that sucked. All right, good. Kind enough to let me use his tool. I, I, that's really awesome, man. I know I, that, that goes above and beyond. And check out my first tack with a real welder. It's, it, 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 it's not bad. And he's also letting me do my first vertical beat. A little fast. A little fast. But it still... But it did it something, right? Yep. Go a little slower this time. I'll go a little slower. Here's my third weld, and I gotta say, I'm getting used to it and I, I really appreciate him letting me use his professional tools. And that's another thing I wanted to touch base on, tools and space. You should never be ashamed to pick your battles and this project has been a huge battle of tools and space. First off, my garage was way too small. The freaking van wouldn't even fit inside. And I'm talking both ways, flew across the country, drove it all the way back just to realize that. Wicked bummer. Number two, I couldn't devote the extra funds or space into welding because I'm a renter and I'm not allowed to upgrade my breaker box. Another huge bummer, but it all is starting to make sense now, huh? So that's why 252 is a part of the build. They're basically my neighbors and I knew it would be able to solve the problems with this shop here and be a great 
learning experience. Bottom line. Today has been very productive. We're gonna kind of wind things down with this just being tacked. It needs to be finalized with the welds. So we're gonna take the two panels that have been drying pretty much the rest of the day, bring them in, let them simmer, and we'll come back at you guys with day four of the big build here at 252 Customs and friends. Everybody's been helping out. This has been a really awesome experience so far. So I'm gonna get, get going. I gotta help out cleaning up here, but thanks for watching guys. Just woke up pulling out of the hotel for day four of the big build. Yesterday was awesome. We got a lot of stuff done, but it's a little bit rainy today. You can see we got some driplets, so the painting, the rest of the painting, may give us a little Take bit of trouble. Take the next right toward but, Greenville hey. Boulevard Northeast, then turn left onto Greenville Boulevard Northeast. To make sure all this only happens one time, it's probably smart to do a test fit while it's just packed like this. So that's gonna be the next step. We need to slide it in there full, cause it ain't gonna hurt to fall. Yeah. We'll get scratched. Oh yeah, it's scratch it up, sand it down. Flip her up. Just push it up, watch your feet. I brought my light, I'm so stupid. Here we go, a little shop light. See here, let's lead up to the top of the roof. And she's looking mint. All right, that's it. piece is coming in. We got the guys doing the heavy lifting. Believe me, I want to be doing the heavy lifting, but I got to be doing the filming or else we'll not get any bit of this on film. So here we are, big piece, big heavy mama, all painted black. She's coming in. Woo. Gracious. Watch them fingers, she's a, whew, she's a beast on that one. And I guess it does help that I'm the small guy so I can squeeze into these small little areas and get all these shots. <laughs> we got a snaggeroo up at the top a little there. Is that what it's catching yeah, on right there? It's on top of the boat. On top of the boat. That's what I thought was happening back here but it wasn't. All right, the last 20 minutes has been basically getting this just right. It took a little bit of finagling because some spots were being stubborn. So in the end, we had to take out a couple bolts and we're gonna do a little bit of trimming just right here because that wheel well is extra tight. Teamwork makes the dream work. Coming in like a bad out of We got our buddy. You guys probably recognize him from his own little demos on the channel. He's a loud fella here helping us out. Send her Oh yeah. Oh, that was awesome. Lot. That was a lot easier. Oh, With no, the no, bolt no. removed down on bottom, that made a hell of a lot of a difference. All right, here comes the bottom piece. I don't have my other camera, dang it. Can I just pull it past this one right here? I got it. Are ready? Yeah. Man. Oh my God in heaven. Look at that. Now that's a photo right there, man. That's a photo. And one of the most important steps is making sure that everything remains square. So these things adding pressure on both sides keeps the bottom wedged in 
height. And with a combination of those things with some leverage, we're gonna push this. You wanna do that one more time so we can visualize it for everybody? Look at that. It kind of will, it will screw things up there on the bottom with a little more action. And that's how we get everything perfect on the right. That looks good right there. Boom, she ain't moving now. And here's the left. And the front is pretty aggressive. Holy shit. And there's the right side. Deck. And the front left. So essentially just kept bouncing back and forth between one side to the next side and got her perfect. Just prepped all the top pieces. But I think we're gonna have to tackle this slightly differently with maybe wedging both sides down so we can pry these up. And then the opposite end is gonna go and we're gonna be able to pop the roof right in. Because the rungs are different sizes every single time, so every piece is different size. Right now we're just correlating what Justin is measuring, and then he's yelling off to us in a relay, and we're picking up the right panels, laying them in line in the right order that they go. Do something like this. A little wedge action. Tilted this down. You can see how going modular really helped out because of these stupid rails going on the factory roof. You like y'all doing a great job. I can get that. Heck yeah, man. And we just added these pieces of wood because Justin got freaking clocked right in the head after a pound. Oh man, this angle is so is so narrow. I had to bend way back. There's no way someone could film and do this at the same time. Yeah, so you grab the end, man. Yeah, I got the end. You know me. Oh, I got we need to go right, yeah, left with the last panel, right with the second panel. Hold oh, no. on, I got the wood under. Now you need to line them up, so they're good. Yeah, that one needs to come out a little bit if it's flush. That one goes. That one goes. Oh, oh They got that clamp. <laughs> Give her some love caps. Oh, oh, watch. All right, yep, yep, yep. I know this really? last portion is good. Just a couple beats. It's going in. Bit by bit. And that meets up pretty damn decent with that extra angle instead of that full piece of tubing. That was good teamwork. We were all friggin' in here getting as much strength as we could possibly put into this side and she's in there now. And you can tell a lot of the places are already so strong that you can't even move them. Other places are actually a little bit more space because the roof changed the whole damn way. As you can see, this one's slacked, this one's tight as heck. It was, it was like this the whole way. Checked every dimension with 59s going across and 77s uh, diagonally. That's to keep her square. Back, back, back. It's going fast now. Fast forward some B roll shots. I'm not exactly sure what you guys have seen and what you haven't seen because I've been doing a lot. Every bit, we're just plugging away, welding all of the upper seams as we speak. So right now, we're getting it to the point where I can actually drive it home. The bottom wells will be finished next time with the insert for the inner squares. All right, fast forward just about 10 minutes and those last little sections are pretty much complete. The full beads will come later because we all need to take a break. It may not seem like we've been putting in like a lot of work each day, but that's because editing makes the magic and all this is actually very hard work. We're all investing in a lot of time and there's the man himself making all this possible with his own garage, with this beautiful cage. It's really, really looking beautiful. So we're gonna let this roll off for part maybe three or maybe four. I am so confused by now, but guys, it really means a lot that you're checking out this build from start to finish. Until the next one, this is EXO and Justin and everybody else who's been a part of this sign in out. I will talk to you 
in the next one. <laughs>